Julia Okujax. I'm Julia Okujax. Welcome. And this is Brandon. Welcome to yet another edition of Bandit. Greetings, Brandon. How are you all today? I hope you're good. And I am good. Yes, I'm in a good space. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of honking around. That just shows that, uh, hey, signs of life. So, I want to come today and then um, talk to you about the second part of um, staying in your lane. Now, when this topic was suggested to me by Oge, I thought this was just a one-time shot thing that I would talk about. But the more I reflect on it and write about it, I really put down my notes and write, I see that there is a lot more that I could, I could share with you. So, last time we spoke, I believe I laid the foundation for this topic, staying in your lane. And this week I'll do my best to land it and hopefully we'll keep it there for now. Now why is this an important topic for brands and for the whole process of branding? Because as a brand you have to decide who you are. You can't be a coach one day and the next day you're selling thrift goods. And the very next week they're telling us all about how to beat the algorithm. That's too much too soon. We will know who you are. Are you fish? Are you beef? Why are you? Are you chicken? We need to know. So yes, you can do a lot of things. And we are indeed gifted, resourced to do a lot of things. But you have to first of all establish who you are in a particular field. So you can do all these things, know how to do them. But I mean, for instance, I believe I make a very, very I would call it Michelin star worthy pot of a fair fair every time I make it. My friends tell me and my family loves it too. So that's good enough for me. But I'm not about to come and teach you how to do a fair fair. That is why soup, epic why soup. You know, there are people who that's their passion and they can do it well. I'm just that instinctive domestic cook, you know. So just because I can do it doesn't mean I should come and do it. So the question is, what is your brand? When you're talking about staying in your lane, what is your brand. What do you want to be known for? Because you have to be known for something. Pablo Picasso could do so many things. There was no first paintings. He could do so many. Van Gogh was known for so many things, but there was no first paintings. Especially the statue of Michael. I think yes, sculpture painting statue of um, Michael, the Michael baby, and then also the um, the painting of the Sistine Chapel. How do you want to show up in the world? Do you want to show up as a juice coach? Excellent thing to do. Do you want to show up as a corporate titan? Excellent thing to do. What do you want to be remembered for? What legacy? What do you leave behind in the minds of people? Is it confusion? Today you're teaching women how to love their husbands better. The next day you're teaching us um, how to put our old rooms together. Well, there might be a connection there. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. But remember, on this journey of seeing in your lane, on this journey of branding, being a brand and becoming, it is a process. Always remember that. So people ask or say, I've got so much inside me that I want to share. Why do you box me in? Seeing in your lane doesn't mean boxing you in. As I said, to reiterate what I said earlier, be known for one thing first. Be trusted to do one thing very well and explore all the different things that you can do with that one gifting. Because there's always one gifting that presents itself. Like this is, it's not the glorious hanging fruit, but that is what will not let you sleep at night because you must do it, you know. And make sure you give outstanding value in that one thing before you diversify. We had a guest um, about two years ago, Victor Ipo. So Ipo, um, he's an artist. But there's so many other things. When I was thinking about it, I just he started as a cartoon. He was an artist. But he told me that he was that kind of he was that child that could not be kept away from drawing. That um, when he was in the village during the civil war, Nigerian civil war, for some of you and that is uh, something you don't know about, but I'm sure you've heard about it though. You know, not a good thing to have lived through. Yeah. But during the Nigerian Civil War, that he was always paint, uh, drawing things on the ground and everything, and he just couldn't help himself. That was something that he meant. And then he picked on a particular 
mode of um, painting after he became a cartoonist. And that was, he was still on his way to becoming who he is. And he picked on the CBD, which is a codified kind of hieroglyphics, you know, but it's a codified language. And he infused that into his paintings. So he's known for taking the CBD codified language from the southeastern part of and Cameroon, yeah, of Nigeria and Cameroon. But he's known for taking it around the world. He's made it famous. So he's moved from painting to sculpture, monographs, installations, scholarly writings. This course, there is a book, there's a fake book on him, you know, merchandising. I mean, he has built his brand and sculptural installations. You know, right now, I think he's in Abu Dhabi. Um, Victor, just in case you watch this, in case I'm wrong, please correct me. I think it's Abu Dhabi. And, and he takes fabulous photographs. Fabulous photographs. Absolutely. If he wanted to also extend his brand in that direction, he would. And, and he could do it extremely well. Now, these are all different expressions of one gift. It is one root and many fruits. So what is your one root? What is your one root? Because you can have many fruits. So when we say stay in your lane, it's be known for something deep, deep, deep well. Let your roots go in properly. And then by the time you're fruiting, so many things are coming out and you're rolling like a superstar, a multi-talented brand. And you're not just seen all over the place. Okay. Now, people also ask, about changing names. Is that not possible? Yeah, you can change names. You can start off as one thing. And I was, you remember Priscilla? Okay, she and I were talking about her brand, which is now called Kamba. Hey, you got a name for Priscilla's brand. Kamba, which means perfect. And she's still figuring out who her audience is. Is she going to do the urban thing or is she going to do the uh, shadow thing? And we'll have her back on our show when she decides. And all these things will go into her deciding what kind of logo, what kind of colors, etc. Yeah. So, yeah, you can change names. You can decide, I want to be like this, or I want to be like the other you know, thing as you go on in your life. But are you really changing names, or is it the Hilda Bassi phenomenon? What is the Hilda Bassi phenomenon? Someone does something successfully, something that nobody else thought that um, could be done. And suddenly, everybody else jumps on that same thing. Hmm. I think we've had mm -hmm. people who can... I think there was a kiss -a -thon, there was a cry -a -thon, uh, been, Never mind many cook -a -thons. This morning, when I just put on my phone, I saw somebody, a cook or a chef, uh, please correct, forgive me, I may not have the right terminology. But someone in Kenya says, oh, she's exceeded, she's busy with her bass's records. I mean, hey girl, join, join, join the party, join the party, you know, but she said this was unofficial, I, I didn't bother to read the name, but I know that once you are, have done something, other people are going to try and do it like you, but there's nothing like the original, could be your own original, seriously, don't just jump on the bandwagon, and I don't know much about Hilda, and I know a lot of people have come up with stories and theories and uh, lessons to learn from his life. but this is what I have gleaned because she is a brand she is uh, shaping up to be a, a, a rock star brand but you know to get a rock star status it doesn't start in one day so we'll check her out in another two years got me you know, three years you know. but Hilda didn't start in 2023 that's only when us the rest of the world you know her she started uh, cooking a long time ago but she didn't just come there to cook off of my favorite food. Hey, you know, she didn't just come there to cook little things or fried dough or anything. She came there to cook and she had like two pots on the go. I, I will confess I wasn't watching closely all the time, but as much as I could, I was there on social media hailing her. You know, she chose her path, she chose her craft, she started working on it. She built quietly, she built anonymously to those outside her circle. And then she built her muscles emotionally, physically. She built her knowledge. She knew what she needed to do. And that's another thing important. When you want to change things, you must know what you have to do. 
what you have to do. Because reinventing yourself is hard. She knew what she had to do. She understood her assignment. And then she intentionally decided to go for gold within her branding circle. Now we all know her name. Now we're all trying to outdo her record. Yes, we can all try, we can outdo her record. Somebody can outdo her record. Yes, for sure. But in Africa, she will always be known as the princess. And that is the beauty of branding. So, another thing that you need to think about is what is your motivation? Why do you want to do that thing? Why do you want to change your name? I've always told people that I can, if you give me a microphone, I can talk. If you tell me to tell the story of my life, I mean, I think I am the best, I'm the expert on the story of my life. And I can draw lessons that you can learn from the story of my life. Things that have happened to me, things that are, I, I have happened to other people, and people that have happened to me, and things that have happened to me as well. You know, so I can tell you that I love to teach, I love to watch people, I love to learn from people. And I don't think I've gone so far because I started as a lecturer and here I am still trying to teach. So in different iterations of my life, I've become I've been that same person. But these are the things in recapping. These are the things I hope you have learned. Branding is a process. It is a process. It starts from the inside and then it manifests from the outside. It's intentional. Then that is, you must be deliberate about it. Then number two, do not be seduced by opportunities. They call it SPO. Do not be seduced by opportunities. Opportunities will come. Those are the bright, shiny, glittery things that are telling you, look at me, look at me. You can be like this, you can be like that. But please focus on who you are. Do not be great. Be known for one thing, well. When people mention you, let them say, okay, this is what we know her for. You know? And Number four, offer value. Value is very important. And number five, and I'll stop there, when you are on one lane, or you're branching out, or you want to change lane, consider your motives very seriously. Why do you want to do that? And as you're considering your motives, think about your values. Will your values let you do that thing that you want to do? I hope this is helped you a lot as you walk along your branding journey. The more I talk about these things, the more this sink into my spirit. And I know that uh, what I am doing is what I was meant to do. So when I'm coaching, I'm telling a story from branding. This is me, this is Julia. And I hope you can sit there on the other side and say, this is me or I'm getting to me. Thank you for letting me and Julia Jackson want to be part of your branding journey. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.